If you got your Bible, go to uh, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, verse 31. The Bible said, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Verse 35, Paul said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are all killed all the day long. We are all accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I begin to think about it being Mother's Day. A mother's love is unconditional. I think about the prison just down the road here from us. There's some pretty bad fellers in there. That's done some bad things. Amen. But <clears throat> they all have a mother. And no doubt, whatever they've done, their mother loved them unconditionally. May not have loved the choices that they made in life or the wrongs that they done, but they still love their son. This is an all-male uh, uh, prison. Those incarcerated, all of them are males. No doubt their mother loved them. If they was a murderer, she did not love that they took someone's life. Maybe they was a robber. She still loved them. Amen. She didn't love them because didn't love the sin of robbery. But she still loved her son. And I began to read these scriptures the other day. and I knew Mother's Day was approaching. 
I thought, Lord, I need a message to, to uplift the mothers. And he laid this one verse on my, on my heart. And reading the Bible is like eating a tater chip. You just can't eat one verse. You got to have one or two. You got to have more than one. And, uh, but verse 35, he said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Paul asked the church at Rome a question. Who's going to separate us from the love of God? The only one that can separate you from Christ is yourself. But that don't mean that God won't still love you. I said this the other night, maybe it was Wednesday night. If you go to hell, you'll go over the blood of Jesus to get there. If you go to hell, it's not God's choice for humans to go to hell. If you go to hell, you'll go over the blood of Jesus Christ to get there. Amen. It's our choice. We have, amen. The Bible said, choose you this day whom you shall serve. I choose to serve the Lord. I choose to serve him. Amen. I love him because he first loved us. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. I was the ungodly. I was the one. Amen. I was a sinner. I, my righteousness all the, all the good that I could have done, still it was nothing but filthy rags. Our righteousness, the Bible said, was as filthy rags. No good for nothing. Amen. I, I, do you know what an old dirty rag is? I, I, I relate to it out from the man's perspective, the man's point of view. Working on something, you get your hands dirty, maybe get grease on you and different things. You look and you take that rag and you wipe your hands off and then that rag becomes so becomes soiled with grease yeah. amen. amen and it's hard to get those grease stains out and you got one or two options throw it in the trash and haul it off or put it in the barrel and burn it or however you want to burn trash that's the way our righteousness was yeah. the, all the good that we thought that we could do it was still nothing but dirt it was still nothing good nothing amen it was not good enough but in my sin, Christ still loved me. All the wrong that I've done, he still loved me. Amen. You know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid as human beings we can commit murder and never swing a sword, throw a knife, or fire a gun. Huh? Never lay hands on nobody, but we can become murderers by what we say. Amen. Jesus told us, he said, it would be better that a millstone be hanged about your neck and you cast into the depths of the sea than to offend one of these little ones. Amen. People said, well, that was, Jesus was talking about the children. Well, I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm a child of God. How about you, neighbor? Amen. What shall separate us? Or the Bible said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. People says, I, I can't go to church. Why? Why can't you? Like Jimmy said last night, hey, listen, it's not a time to hold back. Preachers need to cry loud and spare not and lift up their voice like a trumpet. Amen. 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 Jimmy said it last night, and I got thinking about it. They're standing in line. Most roller coasters are, are 60 to 90 seconds. They go so fast. Sometimes they'll stand in line an hour, maybe two, maybe three. And they'll squall to the top of their lungs while they ride that ride. And like Jimmy said last night, they'll get off that ride and they'll go get right back in line. Amen. Amen. Spent half a day standing in line for two to three minutes worth of screaming. Well, just get in the car with me. You won't have to stand in line. I promise you I'll make you scream. Huh? Sometime Brooke squalls at me and I ain't trying to make her squall. Amen. But who shall separate us from the love of God? Amen. Amen. Who? What is it? What is that that would separate us from the love of God? People say, well, I can't go to church with so-and-so. Well, if you can't go to church with them, how do you think you're going to go to heaven with them? Amen. 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 How do you think you're going to go? There's only one heaven. Amen. Go to Ephesians 4 and read what Paul was writing to the church of, at Ephesus. There's only one heaven. There's only one Lord. There's only one God. Amen. There's a lot of little G gods, but there's only one big G God. Amen. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. You mothers in here, no doubt you've loved your children down through the years. Amen. Maybe they've not always made the right decisions. Maybe they've not always made the right choices, but you still loved them. Huh? Christ loved us so much that he died for us. Amen. He even prayed in the garden. He knew what was coming upon the flesh. He knew the pain and the agony and the suffering that was coming his way. And he prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He prayed and he cried aloud. Lord, I, I, in other words, I know what's coming. He already knew the suffering that he was going to endure. And he was praying to the Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Amen. The flesh did not want to endure what was getting ready to happen. But then the Spirit took over. And the prayer went like this. Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Huh? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Who shall separate a mother's love from their children? Amen, somebody. Huh? I remember Dad giving an illustration like this one time, and, and uh, I want to use it this morning. There was this mother. Her son uh, uh, was uh, a son or daughter. I can't remember. We're going to say son. It's my story. I'm telling it now, so it's going to be a son. Uh, but uh, her, uh, her son was in, a, in, in band class at school. And uh, what do you call that when, them, when, they, when the, everybody can come and watch them at school? Yeah, they had a band recital. And uh, so uh, they went to this band recital, and uh, this mother's son, he was in the percussion, which was the drums, and, and uh, he was out of beat. And that mother nudged one set beside her, and she said, I want you to look at that. I said, everybody else is out of beat, and my boy's the only one in time. <laughs> huh? That's a mother's love. That's a mother's love. Snudged the one sitting beside her. Look at that. My son's the only one keeping time and the rest of them's out of beat. That's a mother's love. You want to know the love of Christ? The love of Christ looked down and he saw the wrong that we was going to do. He knew that the bad decisions that we were going to make. And I can, I can almost guarantee you that every one of us in here has made a bad decision at one time or another. Huh? I can almost guarantee you every one of us has made a bad decision. But you know what? Christ looked beyond that bad decision. Christ looked beyond that sin. He, look, he looked beyond that shame. He looked beyond all the wrong that we was going to do. And he said, there's a soul there. I created them in my image and I'm going to die for them. Huh? The love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Who? What is it today that, amen, there's nothing. I can't knock you out of heaven. And you can't knock me out of heaven. Amen? I can't knock you out of heaven. The only one that can take your name out of the Lamb's book of life is yourself. Huh? Well, preacher, what do you mean? He said, I, the Bible said, I will not dwell in an unclean temple. Amen? We profess that we love God. We profess that we love Him because He first loved us. We profess that we love the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost said, I'll not dwell in an unclean temple. I won't dwell in ungodliness. I won't dwell in unrighteousness. Huh? Who is it that's living unrighteous? It's the one that does not want to do what thus saith the Word of God. Amen. Mom's sitting here this morning, and she can tell you this, that... Uh, if I had an open book test and I failed it, Dad would get pretty mad at me. And he would say, son, you didn't apply yourself. There ain't no way you should have failed that test because it was open book. Well, I want to tell you this. When we stand before God, Jimmy said this last night, there won't be no way that we can say, I did not know that. Huh? Why? Because it's an open book. Amen. We're going to be judged by the word of God. You're not going to be able to stand before the Lord and beg and plead. Amen. Like Jimmy said last night. Can you, can you just imagine? 
I was sitting over there last night, and I was just trying to imagine, hey, man, what it's going to be like when they stand before God. Please, God, just let me in. I, I, I promise, Lord, just let me in. I got to thinking about old Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, man, when he was sent out into the field, the Bible said to graze with the wild asses. I, I would wonder if they would be people stand before God. God, make me a lamb. Make me a lion or make me, hey, man, make me a wild beast to graze. And the old pastor, I just want to make it in. Would they beg and plead like that? No, the Bible don't say that. But just, just thinking in your mind. Amen. Amen. Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? But those dreaded words will come forth. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Come on. I never knew you. Amen. You want to know what? I can almost guarantee you there's going to be some crying. There's going to be some weeping. There's going to be, hey man, some agony. When those angels of darkness come, hey man, when, the, when, the, when God calls his angels to cast them into outer darkness and those angels of darkness come and bind them with chains and fetters, hey man, and they're cast into that, hey man, that lake of fire. Come on. Do you understand? Listen, peop, people's got hell all wrong. People think, well, I go to hell, I'll be consumed. Listen, it ain't that kind of fire. It ain't that kind of fire. Hey man, and ain't nobody in their right mind would say that I want to go to hell. Amen. If that's your thought process this morning, we need to stop right now and lay hands on you and pray for you. Amen. Hey man, if the Lord will move, us, move on us just right, cast that lying spirit out of you. Amen. Hey man, the wrong that we done, Christ looked down and he said, I'll still go for him. I'll, I'll still go to the cross. He who knew no sin. Hey man, I think about him hanging on that cross between two thieves. Huh? One of them are mocking him and they're laughing at him. If you be who you say you are, get down off of there. And that other thief saying, shut up. He don't deserve this. We do. Amen. Huh? Think about that, neighbor. Come on. The middle man. Hey, man. Preach the message one time on that, the middle man. Aren't you glad for the middle man? Amen. Amen. The one that stands in the gap between us and God. Amen. Here he hangs between two thieves. One of mocking and making fun of him. You know, both of them could have said, Lord, this day when you enter into your kingdom, will you remember me? And you know what Jesus would have said? I will. Huh? I will. But only one of them asked, Lord, will you remember me when you enter into your kingdom? Amen. What did Jesus do? He looked over at him and he said, this day. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's the love of Christ. That man was being put to death, a thief, capital punishment. That man was being crucified for the wrongs that he had done. But the Savior was hanging on the cross beside him. And he looked over and he said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. The love of Christ, who shall separate us from the love of God? There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I'm telling you, church, listen. I've been in this prison over here. I told you once before, there was a man that used to come to Bible study over there. He himself, or he had had it done, was responsible for 37 murders. Amen. Th or 36, I'm sorry, 36 murders. Huh? But he come to Bible study, and he asked the Lord to forgive him. Do you believe the Lord forgave him? Amen. I believe he did. Paul was a murderer, and God, and God forgive him. Huh? And I remember, I, I'm telling you, I remember like it was last night. The chaplain said, he told uh, David, he said, uh, uh, Dad, he said, Dave, he said, I'll, I'll show you who it is. You see, when we went in, we had to go in, and we had to be locked in a room, and uh, the prisoners had to make a move. There's... A, uh, a call come over the intercom and it was time for them to move. Well, if we wasn't locked up, we was in harm's way. Well, once all the prisoners made their move, we was able to go into the chapel. And uh, so while we was locked up, Dad began to think about it. And I didn't know what Dad was thinking. All right, here come the chaplain. He said, all right, boys. He said, everything's good. You're ready to move. 
Dad, I remember him telling that chaplain, Chaplain Waters. He said, don't tell me who that guy is. He said, do what? You don't want to know who he is? He said, no. I don't want to pass judgment on him. Huh? I don't want to know who he is. If Christ forgive him, I don't need to know who he is. I don't need to know what he's done. Huh? You see, that's the love of God. And I'm not bragging on my daddy, but honey, that's the way it should be this morning. Christ, amen, forgets about the wrong that we've done when we come to him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Christ forgets everything that we've ever said and we've ever done. Amen. That's the love of Christ. And we say we're Christian, which simply means to be Christ-like. But do we forget about the things that happened in yesteryears? Huh? Do we forget about the wrong that we've done to others or others have done to us or both? Come on. See, a mother's love looks past the faults of her children. Huh? That man down there, I don't, I don't remember his name. At one time I knew it, but it's, it's left my memory. But that man that was responsible for 36 deaths, his mother still loved him. Huh? I forget how many life sentences he was serving. He was, he, he was not going to see outside of concrete, razor wire, and fences the rest of his days. He was going to die in prison. Huh? But his mommy still loved him. Huh? He done some wrong. <laughs> Me and Brooke and Jessica and Jonathan. A few years ago we went hunting up uh, upstate in Bath County. and <laughs> We pulled into a gas station there. And we was uh, getting gas. And uh, maybe some tater chips and some other things. And. Jonathan has an encounter with a man. He said, you're Kelly, ain't you? He said, yeah, who are you? He said, I was an inmate up there at Wallens Ridge. Up on the ridge, I believe is what he said. Hey, man, Jonathan, come back to the car. He said, man, he said, that's an eerie feeling. Huh? That's an eerie feeling. Meeting one of them guys on the outside. Because I'm telling you, there's some, there's some people out here that'll do harm to you and don't think nothing about it. Come on. They'll cut you with a plastic knife. Whatever they can make. Huh? He said, that was an eerie feeling. But they wasn't no problems. Amen? And I'm telling you, church, listen. I, I mean, I thought, I thought when we went into the prison, them guards, they'd have guns and, and be ready. They ain't got nothing but a body alarm. Huh? They ain't got nothing but a body alarm. And I remember being in this prison right down here. Hey, man, there was a time I couldn't go in what they called the big house. I had to go to the camp. You had to be 21 or older to go into the big house. Amen. And I went in and I began to look around and the devil tried to put fear upon me. He said, you know, there's murderers in here. Amen. And I began to get frightful, but I, I began to tell the devil to live as Christ and to die as gain. Huh? If it's my time, I'm out here. I'm leaving here. Amen. But that's all them prisoners. Uh, that's all them guards have got around. The prisoners is just a body alarm. That's all they've got. And the prisoners has got whatever they can think of and made. Shanks, whatever, whatever they've made it out of. You know, they can make a shank out of toilet paper. And get it so sharp that it'll cut your throat. Now you think about that. Huh? But you know what? All the wrong that they've done, a mother still loves them. Come on, somebody. And as much as that mommy loves them, there's a Savior that died on a cross for their sins. There's a Savior that hung on a cross. Hey Amen. Between two thieves. In agony and in pain. He knew no sin. But he became the sin. That we could have a way of escape. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Huh? Who? There ain't nobody in here can separate you from the love of God. Except yourself. Yourself. Huh? He said, I'll not dwell in an unclean temple. Hey, Amen. The Bible said if you take away from this book, he said, your name will be removed from the Lamb's book of life. And he said, if you add to this book, what would happen? The plagues of this book would be added unto you. I don't know about you, but I don't want my name removed, and I sure don't want no plagues. Huh? We're the only one that can stand in the way of making heaven our home. Because if we come before him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and we say, God, forgive us of our sin, 
He is faithful and just to forgive. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Huh? Who? That mother's love. Who? Who is going to stand in the way? No matter what the choice of the child has been, that mother still loves them. Huh? I think about this ain't a mother, but it's a father. About the prodigal son. Hey man, do you know that father when his son was gone, he was no doubt in anguish, praying for his son. I believe he was praying for him. Amen. Don't you? If your son was gone and you didn't know where he's at, wouldn't you be praying for him? Huh? Wouldn't you be praying for him? Then all of a sudden, here comes that prodigal home. And he smells like a hog. And he smells like the, 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 the sin of the world. He's, he spent his living on right. He spent his inheritance on riotous living. Laying with different women. Drinking and marrying and just doing things ungodly. But you know what that father did? Huh? He went out. And he fell upon his neck and he began to kiss him. Huh? And he said, let's put a ring on his finger. Bring a fine robe and let's put upon him. Huh? My son, which was lost, is now found. Come on, neighbor. We ought to be rejoicing when a saint of God comes and give their heart to the Lord. Because the angels in heaven are rejoicing over just one soul that repents. Church, that's what it's all about. A mother's love, a parent's love is unconditional. It's unconditional. Did you ever do anything to disappoint your parents? I did. I kept a lot of things hid, didn't I, Mama? <laughs> Mom had a lady sit down. Well, it was, it was my Aunt uh, Marie. We call her sis. She was talking with Mom. She said, I can't believe what all your son's done. She said, what are you talking about? She said, he gave his testimony now that God brought him out of partying and drinking alcohol. And she said, you must be mistaken. That ain't my boy. <laughs> well, it's sad to say, but it was. I'm not boasting. I'm not bragging. We've all made bad decisions. Huh? We've all made bad decisions. Jimmy, was it you took that razor and cut up your mommy's? A chair was a chair or a couch one <laughs> that wasn't a good decision was it and no doubt Zuane was mad but she still loved him huh you probably got a whooping over that didn't you huh <laughs> he said he got the blood cut out of him she didn't do that because she hated him did she she loved him she realized the danger as he was cutting up that cushion hey man he could have slipped and cut a main Vein or a main artery and bled to death. A razor blade. Huh? Boy, I'm telling you, I got some whoopings growing up. I deserved every one of them and, and probably three times as many that I got. I didn't always make the best decisions, church. Even though I had God-fearing parents that would say, Son, you don't need to do this. Guess what? That little old teenage punk thought he knew more than what mom and daddy knew. And he did it anyhow. Huh? We've all made bad decisions. Come on. We've all made bad decisions. But you know what? That mother and that father, they've stood right there with open arms. I love you. I love you unconditionally. Come on, somebody. Zuane loved Jimmy, honey. She, even though she whooped him, cut the blood out of him, huh? she still loved him. She still loved him. I told Brooke the other day, we was loading or unloading a dishwasher. We was both in the kitchen, and there's a cutting board. I don't know. It's probably about the size of this tablet with a handle. And I said, I remember when I was in kindergarten seeing a paddle like that. I said, do you remember that? She said, no, they was done away with the time I got in school. I said, man, I'm old. <laughs> but I remember... I was in Miss Ford's class, and I was as tall as she was. She was a little short lady. And, uh, 
and, and Elk Knob, I don't know if it's still the same way, but there was two classrooms, and they had a Jack and Jill bathroom. You know what I'm talking about? You went in the classroom from the hallway, went into this classroom or this classroom, but you could get to the bathroom from both classrooms once you was in there. And uh, when you got paddled, there had to be a witness. And uh, fifth grade class, Miss Wolliver, Jimmy Wolliver was her name. And uh, she'd come over there and she'd say, Miss Ford, can I borrow you for just a minute? And she said, all right, class, now you color and do this, that, and the other. And they'd go in there and they'd shut them doors, honey, and I'd hear it. <laughs> huh? Three licks. I'd hear some crying after that. Come on. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, you spare the rod, you hate the child. Come on, somebody. That's what's wrong with the world today. They've not had the correction that they needed. The many times that mom whooped me, and the many, dad didn't whoop me a whole lot. He'd make me right, because he knew mom done whoop me. But they did that because they loved me. Come on, and that's why I'm such an angel today. <laughs> I still make mistakes. It's all right to smile. Amen. It's all right to smile. But you see, that I see a generation that's coming up behind us. It's not had no correction. Huh? It's not had no discipline. Hey Amen. And they're running wild. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm talking about, I'm talking about single digit kids. When I say single digit, nine and younger, that'll cuss their parents to their face. Huh? Call them ungodly names. And the mother and the father won't do nothing about it. Probably because the father ain't nowhere to be around nowadays, just to be honest with you. And I'm not beating up on nobody. I'm just telling you how that this world has become. Amen. And you've got children that's telling their parents, if you touch me, I'll sue you. I'll call DSS on you. I'll do this and I'll do that. It's, it's my right. Listen, I'm telling you what. Mom and dad would have been put in jail if I was a kid nowadays. The way I was raised back in my raising. Mama never did beat me. Just to be beating on me. Huh? Now there was times that I'd say stuff that I shouldn't have said, but it wasn't, or go get a belt, pow. It was a backhand or a front hand right in the mouth. Huh? And she said, son, don't you size me. Come on. That was a mother's love. I learned respect. I, I, I was bad to tell lies. Huh? Mom couldn't stand for nobody to lie to them. I'd get a whooping. Huh? She said, son, you've lied to me. You've lied to me. She said, I can't stand it when you lie to me. She would she'd tell me, she'd say, I'd rather you tell me the truth. Your punishment wouldn't be near as bad if you would just be honest with me. But you've lied to me. Huh? She knew. But you know what? Christ knows. And he chastens us. He chastens those he loves. He rebukes those he loves. Aren't you glad for the love of Jesus Christ that will give us some correction and some direction? Huh? Aren't you glad when you pray? I hope you don't pray with your fingers in your ears. I hope you pray so that the Lord can talk back to you. Huh? Son, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. Come on. I need you, I need you, 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 you need to go to so and so and ask them for forgiveness. You need to do this, you need to do that. I'm telling you, I thank God for his love and his correction and his chastening. He does not chasten us because he loves us. I mean, because he loves to see us afflicted. He chastens us because he loves us. And he wants to see us do right. We're living in a day and an hour where you can't find a lot of the old time Pentecostal churches they say they're Pentecostal and listen I'm not here to preach on the clothesline but like Jimmy said last night when you get what the word says in your heart honey it's going to start showing it's going to start showing I thought about last night when he, he was talking about the hypocrites how they just wash the outside of the cup do you want to drink out of a dirty cup you want to eat out of a dirty plate? We was cleaning the church up up there, and, 
and uh, found an old glass pop bottle. And Brooke washed it, and she's got all the dirt off the outside. And uh, we ain't got a brush long enough. It, we got one small enough, but it ain't long enough to get all the dirt off the inside. Right. Amen. Amen. And I told her, I said, I don't know when. I think it come out from under the, the old Sunday school rooms that was built on the, on the uh, railroad right away. I don't know when them was built. I said, but that's got a few years on it. That old bottle's got a few years on it. And there was others, but this one wasn't busted. I had busted some others with the machine. But uh, what good is that bottle if you can't get the inside clean? The outside's clean. I mean, you could eat off of the outside, but on the inside, there's still a dirt stain. There's still a little bit of mud. Huh? What good does it do to dress up the outside and not have the inside clean? Come on. Uh, who shall separate us from the love of God? got people today they think hey amen like Jimmy said I don't care if you shave your head slick and you wear a, 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 what is it a, a co- it ain't a collar there's people just because they wear a certain type of clothing they say they're a minister hey amen the clothing don't make you the minister come on I don't care and I'm not coming against Bible colleges or nothing of that sort. But I don't care how many degrees you got. You might have more degrees than a thermometer. But that don't make you a preacher. Huh? The calling has to come from on high. Come on. You can dress up the outside, honey. You can get the thickest Bible that you can order and pack it around and you can be in your three-piece suit. Hey, man, have your dapper Dan hired hair uh, uh, jail in your hair and have it combed just right that don't make you hey amen a preacher who shall separate us from the love of God look around you there ain't nobody in here this morning can knock you out of heaven huh I'm going to point at the one that can knock me out of heaven right here me who shall separate us from the love of God hey amen who who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Amen. Who? Paul was letting you know none of those things will separate you from the love of God. Amen. Jesus said, in this world ye shall have tribulation. Did he not? But what did he go on to say? He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world he said you're going to have some tribulation you're going to have some distress you're going to have some obstacles that you're going to have to overcome but it won't keep you from the love of God huh come on somebody listen I'm telling you this morning church we're living in a time hey man where we're going to suffer persecution we're going to suffer distress the church is going to be persecuted they're against us the world's against us why because we're not for them. Huh? We're not for them. They're against us. Because we're not for them. That's my wife's now. That ain't mine. Amen. Because we preach against the sin that they're committing. Come on. Oh, I, I pray. I'm saved. I go to church. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, you'll know them by the fruit that they bear. Come on, somebody. You'll know them. You'll know by the way they act if they're born again or not. Ah, Now, preacher, you can't be a judge. I'm not being a judge. Amen. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Amen. The Bible said, let judgment begin where? At the house of God. If it's going to begin at the house of God, what's going to judge us? Who, what man has the right to stand up and judge us in the house of God? That ain't what he's talking about. What he's talking about is letting the Word of God judge your life. Come on, somebody. Letting the Word judge you, not some man. Not some man. Well, you're living right. You don't have to worry about it. No, that ain't what he's talking about. Let the Word judge us today. Let judgment begin at the house of God with the Word of God. Who shall separate us from the love of God? That mother's love. What? What would separate? 
There ain't nothing none of y'all could do in here to get my mother to turn on me. Ain't nothing. There ain't nothing you you all could do to get me to turn to get my mother's love for me to turn. It's the same with Christ. He loves us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Huh? While we were yet sinners, huh? who shall separate us from the love of God? There ain't none of these things that's going to separate us. None of these things is going to, hey man, pluck us out of the hand of God. That mother's love is unconditional. But you know what? The love of Christ is too. Huh? The love of Christ is too. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Because I've done some things I'm not proud of. I've disobeyed. Anybody in here ever disobeyed their parents? <laughs> huh? I'm not asking you to tell me what you did, but have you disobeyed? Did you suffer some uh, repercussions from being disobedient once they found out about it? Yeah. I dare say every one of us in here has had a whooping at some time in our life. Has anybody in here not had a whooping? All right. We've all had a whooping then. We know what it's like to feel the rod of correction. Huh? Church, I'm telling you, the love of Christ is unconditional. I, pre I preached and preached and taught and taught, and I'm not bragging on me, but if it's ever a time that we come to realize the love of God, it's now. I know, I know there's been people that's prayed at the altar and been baptized so many times that the fish about recognize who they are. But by the help of God, we need to show them the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. Just like that mother's love. Whatever that child does, she still loves him. May not love his actions. May not love the choices that they've made. But she still loves that child. That's the same way with Christ. He may not love our actions. And he may not love the decisions that we made and the choices that we made. But he still loves us. And we may have to suffer a little bit of the rod of correction. May have to show, suffer some chastening. Amen. But I promise you, it'll be worth it child, after all, child. Amen. It's going to be worth it. Amen. Amen. All right. It's, again, we want to wish you mothers a happy Mother's Day. It's an honor and a privilege. Amen. To have my mama with me today. I thought back over the... Last few years in her sickness, and I'm not trying to be pitiful or nothing like that. I've said this and said this. I thought I'd have to bury my mother for my father. It didn't, it didn't go the way that I thought, but I thank God for my mother. Thank, thank God for the time I get to spend with her. <laughs> the times we get to life. We had a store the other day, and by the time I put it in reverse, the backup beeper come on. I said, well, that's the first time I've heard that. She said, your car's got a backup horn? I said, well, evidently it does. Well, and I was backing up, and I looked up, and there's another truck backing up. He's the one who had the backup horn, but we hit reverse at the same time. But I thank God for a godly mother. She's not always made the right decisions, but neither have I. But she raised me to the best of her ability. And so did my father. All of my family. I look up to my family. We've had differences at times, but I still love them unconditionally. I love them. I love them with a great love. And I love you all this morning. Every one of you. You're my family of God. I can depend on you. Mama was feeling bad the other day and got sent to the ER and different things. I started texting Amen. Those who didn't have Facebook, I started texting. I sent out a, I sent out a, a, a mass text or whatever you call it, a group text. I said, Mama needs prayer. And I knew you all would pray. I thank God for my church family. I don't want nothing to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing to separate us. I want us to be knit together with sinews. An unconditional 
love between us all. Because I'm telling you, the devil's tried to stop this church for quite some time now. But we're still motoring on with the help of God. And as long as we keep Christ at the center of whatever we do, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. As long as we come together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be all right. There is no other name in heaven whereby men must be saved than the name of Jesus. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of God? We name one another this morning. I love all of you. Love you with a, a love that cannot be explained except for Jesus, the love of Christ. Amen. I've tried my best this morning. Hope it's been a blessing to you. Amen. Maybe not the uh, Mother's Day message that you would think. But listen, I still give honor to the mothers. But I want to, get, I want to share with you what Christ gives me to share. Because if I don't, it'll be a mess for me and for you. Amen. We love you today. God bless you. Turn.